It used to be that you deferred to the boss. Is it the boss is always going to have the best ideas? Not likely. Here, nimble fingers, alert minds, and tireless machines. And it used to be, in most companies, that chaos was discouraged. This is where the crazies live. This is where we do our work. It's different. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Used to be you were supposed to climb the corporate ladder. Good morning. Status is who comes up with the best ideas, not who's the oldest, not who's, who's been with the company longest, not, not who has that biggest title. If you go into a culture and there's a bunch of stiffs going around, I can guarantee they're, they're not likely to invent anything. You could stack us up big, as, as big as you want. That's great. Thanks a lot. And we had a great time today. Well, forget the way it used to be. Tonight, the deep dive. One company's secret weapon for innovation. A lot further along in this broadcast, near the end as a matter of fact, you will hear one of the central characters suggest that we look around. The only thing that's not designed by anybody, he will say, is nature. Actually, you could say the same thing by observing that the only designs that don't require constant modification are the ones we find in nature. But the point is well taken. From the buildings in which we live and work to the cars we drive or the knives and forks with which we eat, everything we use was designed to create some sort of marriage between form and function. Does it work, and can we make it look interesting or attractive? What is truly amazing is how long we tend to put up with things that may not work particularly well or may look especially unattractive simply because we're accustomed to them and because no one has ever suggested redesigning those things. There's an interesting distinction between design and invention. Whoever came up with the idea of dental floss, for example, was an inventor, but the man or woman who put it inside that clever little plastic box that lets you tear off just the right length, that was a designer. Now, how does the process of designing a better product work? And would it be interesting to watch that process? When we first broadcast this program back in February, we weren't at all sure what you would think, but. Judging by the number of you who ordered video cassettes of the program and the number of people who contacted the industrial product design firm that is featured in this program, you liked it a lot. Here was the premise of the program. We went to IDEO, the product design folk, and said, take something old and familiar, like, say, the shopping cart, and completely redesign it for us in just five days. ABC News correspondent Jack Smith tells us what happened next. Nine in the morning, day one, and these people have a deadline to meet. So welcome to the kickoff of the shopping cart project. This is Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, and these are designers at IDEO, probably the most influential product development firm in the world. Designers are the reason TVs have square screens, chairs four legs, and toothbrushes nowadays, those squishy handles. In fact, it was IDEO that designed those squishy handles. IDEO has designed everything from high-tech medical equipment to the 25-foot mechanical whale in the movie Free Willy and the first computer mouse for Apple. Smith ski goggles, Nike sunglasses, NEC computer screens. Hundreds of products we take for granted. This is uh, called the Neat Squeeze, squeeze Tooth. Uh, toothpaste tube, which you invented that. The man who runs IDEO is Dave Kelly, a Stanford engineering professor with a Groucho Marx mustache, a dad of genius, and an approach to innovation that usually works. Well, thank you, Fred. But not always. Thanks a lot. I can show you some products that failed. Came up with this idea called monster shoes, where you take these little monsters and lace them into your shoes, like this. And we built a bunch of them, and. Um, I didn't want those either. So. Mostly what IDEO designs, though, does work, and it works very well. Dave and his design teams create about 90 new products every year. The point is that we're not actually experts at any given area. You know, we're kind of experts on the process of how you design stuff. So we don't care if you give us a toothbrush, a toothpaste tube, a tractor, a space shuttle. 
you know, a chair, it's all the same to us. We, like, want to figure out how to innovate in, in, by using our process, applying it. And so for the next five days, the team will apply that process to bringing the supermarket shopping cart into the 21st century. I think first we should maybe all acknowledge that it's kind of insane to do an entire, an entire project in a week. Project leader is Peter Skillman, a 35-year-old Stanford engineer. Project leader because he's good with groups, not because of seniority. He's only been at IDEO for six years. The rest of the team is eclectic, but that's typical here. Whitney Mortimer, Harvard MBA. Peter Coughlin, linguist. Tom Kelly, Dave's brother, marketing expert. Jane Fulton Suri, psychologist. Alex Kazax, 26, a biology major, who's turned down medical school three times because he's having too much fun at IDEO. Kids climbing up and doing this. Kids oh, do that. On the back. No, no. Safety emerges early as an important issue. 22,000 child injuries a year, which is, and so they're hospitalized injuries. I mean, there, there are many others. Not just um, reported in the store. That's, you actually no, no, have to no, go to no, the emergency room. No, that's hospitalized. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, theft. It turns out a lot of carts are stolen. You know, what is the average life of a cart? Does it last two years, five years, ten years? And, and how big is this theft thing? 10 a.m. As the team works, it becomes clear there are no titles here, no permanent assignments. And the other side says, gives us a lot of help, says, be safe. <laughs> Everyone appears to be equal, and they love to mock corporate America. I'll give you status. I'll give you a big red ball on a, on a, on a, on a post, and that says you're a big guy. If you got a ball, you're a senior vice president. You know, what do I care? The desk, the red ball, it's all the same. <laughs> In a very innovative culture, you can't have a kind of hierarchy of here's the boss and the next person down, the next person down, the next person down, because it's impossible that the boss is the one who's had the insightful experience with shopping carts. It's just not possible. According to Kelly, even employees who merely listen to the boss don't add that much either. So you got to hire people who don't listen to you, and that, I don't think... Corporate America wants to hear that right yet. Um, I think we ought to start making those lists about the kinds of questions that we're going to ask. The team splits into groups to find out firsthand what the people who use, make, and repair shopping carts really think. Okay, go. The problem with the plastic cart is the wind catches it. Yeah. And these things have been clocked at 35 across the parking lot. <laughs> Man, that's actually a pretty good point. The, the trick is to find these real experts and so that you can learn much more quickly than you could by just kind of doing it in the normal way and, and trying to learn about it yourself. From everything I read, these things aren't that safe either, you know? Right. Um, so probably the seat itself is going to have to be redesigned. What you're seeing here is the kind of social science, like anthropologists, you know, like you go and study tribes. What is it that, that they do that we can learn from that will help us design a better cart? One of the interesting things for me is looking at how people really don't like to let go of the cart, except for the professional shopper, whose strategy is to leave the cart at various places. In corporate America, many bosses, like, measure whether, they're, whether their people are, uh, you know, who, the good people or the people who are performing are the ones that they see at their desk all the time. That couldn't be further from the truth. The people who are really getting the information are out here talking to the buzzes of the world, going to, to meet other experts, much more useful than sitting at your desk. 3.30 in the afternoon and the group is back at IDEO. There is no let up. Each team is going to demonstrate and communicate and share everything that they've learned today. Um, people went off in the four corners of the earth and are coming back with the golden keys to, the, to innovation. A uh, shopping cart has been clocked at 35 miles an hour traveling through a parking lot in the wind. We were in the store, what, two hours? And, and it was truly frightening just to see the kind of stuff going on. You ought to designate some people to make damn sure that the store owner's point of view is represented. After nine straight hours, the team is tired. They call it a day. So, um, everybody cool? Well, uh, that's great. Thanks a lot. We had a great time today.